thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Mohamed Ise, uh, working with IOM CCCM in Somalia, based in Kismayo, Jubaland State. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to take you through uh, engaging IDB women in COVID-19 response and primarily uh, inclusion of women IDBs in humanitarian response had been facing very many challenges in, 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 in Somalia, but uh, with a lot of trials by CCCM, uh, we have finally made it. And through the Women uh, Participation Project, women has been involved in uh, humanitarian responses and they have really taken part in the COVID-19 uh, activities that I'll be taking you through when uh, the slides are shown by Bruce. Uh, thank you. And Never please mind. bear with okay. us. Yeah, thank you and uh, bear with us uh, as we fixed it. Uh, the slides are showing now, uh, Mohammed, so you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like first to walk you through before I go to how IOMCCM engaged women in COVID-19 response. Uh, I would like to take you through uh, women and displacement in, uh, in Somalia. Uh, as we know, uh, most frequently, uh, most causes of displacement in Somalia include uh, national disasters, uh, disaster shocks such as droughts and, and, and floods. We also have uh, conflict among the Somali tribes or Somali ethnic tribes. As we know, uh, Somalia has been lack of uh, central government uh, since uh, the dictatorial regime of Siad in 1990 was ousted. And you can imagine uh, people live in that years without uh, proper law. Uh, again, uh, the other cause is al shabaab attacks or uh, threats. Uh, when now this displacement occurs, women are the most affected during displacements and uh, indeed uh, they are at risk of uh, sexual violence and GDP during conflict. Uh, women carry the solitary burden of uh, taking care of children because uh, it can happen during displacement, the father is killed or he runs away with his life during uh, conflicts. And then the mother takes care of all the children. Uh, so that's a big burden for women. Uh, also, women face high employment rate uh, during displacement. Uh, second slide, please. Hello. Second slide is up, Mohammed. Yeah, OK. Uh, remember, uh, displacement affects everyone anytime, and it leaves people in need of external help. Now, I would like to take you uh, in the context of Somalia. Uh, as I said, the national disasters, uh, disaster shocks that always prevail in Somalia are droughts and floods, though in the last one year we have been seeing uh, locusts, but that was very rare. That was the only time I have so far seen even in, uh, uh, in the recent 30 years. Uh, also, we have uh, conflict among the Somali ethnic tribes that is causing displacement in Somalia, and Al Shabaab, uh, a religious uh, insurgent that started in Somalia in the last. Uh, uh, 20 or 10 years, and their threats really make people dis uh, get displaced from their origins. Now, LGBs, especially the female or women, face many challenges to participate in humanitarian response uh, in Somalia in IDB settlements. Uh, I would like to take you through some of these challenges that uh, our women folks in Somalia face. This include lack of uh, representations. Uh, women are not represented uh, that much in even uh, the normal society. Uh, the host communities, the leaderships, they are not uh, that much included in the IDBs, uh, leadership structures. Also, Somali culture is one of the factors that really challenge women to participate in humanitarian response as they are not allowed to take uh, uh, lead roles. Uh, we also have uh, male dominance, that's a male of a taken or of a power or of a ruling woman. And again, the other factor is that uh, women uh, illiteracy rate is very high in Somalia as Somalis don't educate girls. 
instead they just let them do their house jobs and only boys are educated in most cases. Uh, now, women, as I said, are the most affected uh, during displacement uh, because uh, even during conflicts, you see women being, uh, you know, raped, uh, sometimes uh, wife battering because there's no uh, judicial systems upright because there's no uh, strong government or uh, strong judicial systems. So women uh, really are at high risk of sexual exploitation and GBP uh, during conflicts. Uh, similarly, uh, women carry a solitary burden of caregiving of children uh, during displacement. As I said uh, in the other slide, that uh, if a father if uh, you know fighting uh, breaks out, what happens? Men escape with their lives, or sometimes they are killed. Now, if a father disappears uh, just to help himself or is killed, the mother takes care and carries the burden of uh, you know caring children. Uh, similarly, uh, there is high employment rate uh, of women during uh, displacement as they leave their original area of life. Now. Uh, in Somalia, especially in the three locations where uh, ROMCCM programs are uh, activated, uh, we have enhanced women's rights and educated people on the rights of women, and uh, inclusion of women in governance structures and uh, advocated for how women can be included. Next slide, please. Slide has changed. Okay. Uh, women were educated on their rights, though, and as part of this uh, capacity building and awareness raising with local authorities and male counterparts uh, were rolled out. And these were covering on the importance of inclusion of women uh, and groups at risk in community representation. Uh, now, after you know, CCM has been uh, activated in Somalia, we have made a lot of trainings given uh, to women, educating them on their rights. Uh, we've also trained the local authorities uh, and advocated for the rights and importance of inclusion of women and other people who are at risk. Uh, as a result, uh, gender representation has been equal in the CAM committees and the IDB uh, settlement leaderships. Today, as I speak here, uh, for example, in Kismar, where I'm placed, we have got four sections of IDBs. Then we have two of the sections managed by male and two of the sections managed by female. That is the offering leadership. And in every site, we have a uh, male leader, female leader. So that is 50-50 kind of uh, leadership in, in, in IDBs in Kismar, as I speak now. Uh, now, for us as ILM to engage women, uh, we have rolled out, uh, rolled out the, that's the next slide. Uh, we have rolled out the women project, by special project, and to respond to COVID 19, the women by special project was rolled out in three locations that is uh, Baidua, uh, that is in Southwest State, Dolo, and Kishmayo, which is in uh, Jubaland State. That's where we have uh, ILM operations uh, as CCM. Now, the main objective of the Women by Special Project is to deploy strategies to address uh, immediate protection concerns and long term uh, needs of displaced women and girls through strengthening uh, participation and community design and led uh, uh, interventions. Uh, under now, the WBP funded by the Safe from the Start Initiative, IOM supported women committees to respond and build capacities in responding to the pandemic. Uh, the methodology, we shall see it in the other slides. Now the system team trained different women groups and committees uh, in the sites, in the IDB sites, uh, through raising awareness on the risks, signs and symptoms, and uh, modes of transmissions of uh, COVID-19 and appropriate mitigation measures at information centers and at the blocks. And again, after we have trained them, we have used these uh, women committees and other women groups to disseminate uh, the same information to the other uh, the larger IDB communities in the in the sites. Thank you. Now let's move to the next slide. Yeah. 
uh, 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 Mohammed, and uh, if you have you have about three to four more minutes to present, uh, continue the presentation. Okay, yeah, I will, I will, I will uh, try my best to finish it up. Uh, now, uh, the women roles in the IDBs, how we have engaged them. Uh, women are producing face masks. 120 women have been engaged, and 17,900 fabrics have been uh, produced. The first batch of these uh, face masks were distributed free for, uh, to the vulnerable uh, IDBs, especially those with underlying conditions and the elderly or those who are at high risk of COVID-19. Uh, the remaining production of the masks were sold at affordable prices to the IDBs and the host community. And through that, uh, these people, uh, the women committees were able to make some livelihoods. The women's committee decided uh, this program through consultation and discussion. Uh, the second activity that was carried out is hand washing stations. Around uh, 70 hand washing stations have been established in the information centers and public institutions across the three sites that spread over Dolo and Kesmayo. Uh, the next slide is, on, is still on the roles of women in COVID-19 response, cleaning materials, distributions. Also, women have uh, distributed cleaning materials like chlorine and other materials to 120 mosques in the IDB sites in Dolo, Kismayo, and Beidoua. Uh, also, women have participated in risk communication and community engagement just to raise the awareness of the people on IBC uh, on COVID-19 information, prevention, and control measures. 1,397 1, women participated in those activities. Now, let's move to the next slide. Uh, after having realized the role of women with the most at risk people, because we have realized the women are at most, uh, at most risk uh, during displacements. Now IOM through the Safe Initiative Fund decided to engage women who are already identified by the CCM teams in the sites. Uh, as a co women committee or as part of the community management committees or as part of women committees or youth committee or elderly. And then through discussions, uh, these women were given some materials and uh, were trained on uh, uh, on how to make uh, things like face masks or how to spread information on uh, COVID-19 uh, prevention and control measures. Sorry, it is raining if my voice is interrupted. Uh, again, these women are also supported with uh, other trainings on uh, how they can carry out this very same message uh, to the community since uh, CCM teams or uh, government workers were not able to reach uh, some of the people who are in the sites. Uh, the achievement of the WPP in Somalia. Hello? Am I audible? Yes, you are, Mohammed. Hi, Moose. Am I audible? Mohammed, yes, yes, you are audible. Mohammed, can Hi, you hear am us? I audible? Yes, yes, you, you are audible. Okay, you, thank you. you. Okay. Okay, now let's see uh, a few of the achievements uh, through this. Uh, Women by Special Project that was implemented in Somalia. Uh, this project has enhanced women's interaction with the larger community as they were able to engage with the religious leaders. That's when they were distributing the cleaning materials to the mosques or when they were selling the face masks they made to the society or when they were taking decisions on where to install the hand washing materials. Also, these activities improved women decision making skills as they had taken the lead role in this activity and uh, performed it successfully. Uh, this activity also encouraged the women participation in the community representation and involvement in community activities. Similarly, it supported the community in COVID-19 prevention and mitigation responses and served as a source of livelihood for women committees. Uh, now, lessons we have learned because initially women were not represented in uh, management committees, were not represented, they never had that voice. But now that they have taken lead and they successfully accomplished, we have realized uh, women can lead successfully in community activities. And this was acknowledged by the local authorities, uh, the host communities, IDB communities, and the humanitarian partners. 
women also, if given the opportunity, can bring good uh, and community-driven uh, decisions that are of help to the society. And then lastly, women can lead to meaningful changes in the community behaviors as they are the backbone of the Somali society. Thank you very much. Uh, and I do apologize. This was my first time to represent. So in case I sometimes go offside somewhere, uh, thank you. I will be still online to answer if there's any comment or questions. Thank you. Over to you, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mohammed. And I think I, I speak for everyone when I, I say you did a great job there. So uh, well done. That was a very interesting um, presentation. I'm just going to chat, uh, check the chat quickly um, to see if any questions came up. Um, there is a question. There, there is a question about sort of local coordination and internal coverage within Somalia. Maybe I'll let you read that question. Um, in the chat box, um, Mohammed, and you can you can sort of um, engage with that yourself. Um, I think, <clears throat> in the interest of time, um, we will move on. But I do have one sort of question for you, Mohammed. Um, I don't know if you were on earlier to see Celeste's um, presentation. I assume you worked with her when she was uh, in Somalia, or still do still do work with her because she's still working with DTM. Um, she gave a very good presentation on uh, looking on the other side. Of women's participation and the benefits that the women themselves get from participating in these coordination structures. Um, <clears throat> in Somalia, do you, I mean, have you done uh, any research or, you know, um, consultations with the women to get their feedback on how they, the groups are being run from their perspective and the kind of things that they're, the kind of benefits um, that they're receiving from it? Uh, Mohammed? Have we lost Mohammed? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, we have really engaged the women in various forums of coordinations, and we have even had them uh, or listened them in different focus group discussions. And they are very happy to coordinate or participate in coordination of humanitarian activities, and they have positively uh, responded. Uh, initially, yes, uh, women were missing, like, for example, when first we were starting uh, system activities in Somalia, that was uh, November 2017, all the leaders were male. Most of the leaders were male, and most of the decisions were male driven. But now that we have uh, educated and advocated for their rights and empowered them, women have joined leadership. Through this, they were able to coordinate and express the best interest of women in coordination forums. And they have really appreciated uh, that we, as CCM, enable them to voice out their feelings and express their needs and concerns. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Um, I think there's some more questions for you and some some feedback, some very positive feedback on your presentation in the chat. Uh, I recommend you look at some of the uh, look at the chat and see the questions, and maybe you can answer um, within the chat function to some of those questions because I think there are some some good points um, and some very sort of like Somalia specific questions that are there. Um, so again, great job. Thank you very much, Mohammed.